we're going to look at area of a circle and the proof to it. So why this formula works or why it's kind of set up this way. Um, so we have a circle here and I've tried my best to split it into roughly 12. If you notice the 12th piece, I've split in half, okay? But it's essentially numbered. It's almost 12 whole pieces um, that are the same. They're supposed to be all the same, each of these slices of the circle, okay? Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to pick this circle apart and we're going to set it up to be similar to a formula for the area of a rectangular shape or a quadrilateral, okay? So um, what we're going to do is we're going to take each piece of the pie here. So here's our first step. This part will be a little long. Okay. So we're just going to kind of tilt them on their edge here. And essentially each of these pieces um, are dealing with a radius, right? So we're going to put them edge to edge. Okay, so, and so unfortunately, the numbers didn't quite move with them all, so I'll have to move those separately. Uh, that's the third one. Okay, so we'll move them one set at a time. And essentially, the point to this practice here is what we're going to build, like we said, is something that looks very similar to a, um, a quadrilateral, oops, don't move them all at the same time, quadrilateral type shape. So I have to edge all of these up, so bear with me. Fourth, you might want to fast forward as I do this. But the reason I'm actually going through each of these steps, oh, geez, I didn't expect that to happen. Um, I'll renumber those ones after. Um, the reason I'm going through each of these steps is I want to show you that the that each of these pieces essentially take up the same area as the area of the circle. So that was the uh, sixth piece. Seventh piece. Our eighth piece. I think that is. So you can see they weren't perfectly drawn on there. I apologize. Eight. Um, I think this would be the ninth. We're almost done. Tenth piece. I'm getting good at this. The eleventh piece. Oh, we're really close now. Okay. Ah, let me get rid of those twelve A and B. I'll fix that after. Okay. And the reason I cut these in half is so that if you notice right now, we're more of a parallelogram, um, but we want this. To look like a um, as rectangular as possible. So these pieces that are cut in half are just going to go on the uh, the ends here to try to fill out that space. Okay. Oh, geez. There you go. Well, actually worked out really nice. Uh, that'll be 12a. We'll call it. And then the b piece here. Same idea. We turn it. And again, we do it in half so that it kind of fills out that spot. Okay, and that's our 12B. Okay, so we obviously want exact um, area of a circle, and we're talking about the area of this circle here. Okay, we need to know how much space is this area taking up, and that should be the same amount of space that this is taking up. Uh, I know they weren't drawn properly, but theoretically they're take up the same amount of space. Um, so we know that the height of this, uh, now that it's set up like a rectangle, would be the distance from the middle of the circle to the end, which would be the radius of a circle. And all of them should be the same. So this distance, even if it was from here to here or from here to here, this is still technically a radius. So this height here is the r. Um, and now, in order to prove this, we need to know the circumference of a circle. And the circumference of a circle is the distance all the way around that circle, which is equal to um, the diameter times pi. But since we're dealing in radius, uh, the diameter is the radius times 2 times um, times pi. Okay, And all of these here, when put together, all of these sides, right, are essentially the perimeter of the circle, or our circumference, right? So all of those would be the circumference, but when we're doing area, we only want half of that 
Um, and the reason we want half is because that would be all of this and all of this, but we only need one side length. We don't need both side lengths. So we're going to divide that idea by 2. So since the circumference of the circle is 2 times r times pi, okay, um, for our length, our length is going to be equal to the circumference divided by 2 okay, of this specific shape. So the length is equal to our circumference was 2 times r times pi divided by 2. Okay? And we know that that twos will cancel out or create a one in our length r is r times pi. So this distance here, the length, remember I didn't recall said this was the width, this length here is a pi times r. And to find area of a four, of a rectangle, area would just simply be the width times the length. And we're going to replace our width. Our width here is r. So our width gets replaced with our r value, an area. Okay. The length is our. It's going to be replaced by our r times pi. So r times pi. Okay. And in multiplication, an associative property means we can multiply in any order we like. So r times r is r squared. Okay. Um, a is equal to r squared times pi, and normally the formula is just written reverse of that. It doesn't matter what order we all multiply it. So pi times r squared. And that essentially um, proves the area of a circle. And the area is essentially just taking um, a one-dimensional measurement, and that's the radius of something, and turning it into a two-dimensional measurement, right? Um, the distance, the radius, is just one length. But uh, an area would deal with the length and width, or the length and depth of um, an object. And that's why you would uh, have like centimeters squared or meters squared.